The next section of the chapter talks about um, evolutionary trade-offs. And uh, what we're, what we're going to be discussing here uh, comes back, uh, whether we're talking about temperature, whether we're talking about water, reproduction, anything an organism does, um, really adapting to one condition um, generally reduces your ability to adapt to other conditions. You cannot be good at absolutely everything. So we might imagine an organism that can live in any environment and thrive in all environment, but uh, in when we think about it in an evolutionary sense, um, that organism would have to have high fitness across all environmental conditions. So that could be some sort of super organism. And uh, as far as we know, there aren't any. So every, every organism has energetic limitations and you can't be good at absolutely everything. All known organisms are adapted to a limited range of environmental conditions. And uh, this is at least partially because of energy limitations. So this is leading to the uh, concept of the principle of allocation. Organisms allocate limited energy to a certain function, which then reduces the amount of energy avail available for other functions. This trade-off in energy allocation will differ in different environments. So the functions might include growth, reproduction, and defense against predators. So an example might be if you're living in an environment that uh, is lacking light and you're a plant, you might grow a bigger trunk so you can get up higher to get the light. Or if you're living in, in, in an environment where uh, conditions change frequently, maybe there's a lot of flooding, you might put a lot of uh, energy into reproduction, produce a lot of seeds so that you're able to make sure your offspring can get off into a different environment. If you're in an environment where you're getting eaten a lot, you might be a plant that grows, that has uh, spines. If you're putting energy into growing spines, you might not have the energy to put into trunks or put into seeds. You can't put it into every function. So the uh, researcher uh, Levins, uh, when talking about this uh, Richard Levins, um, he basically used a mathematical model to look at the evolutionary co consequences of trade-offs and uh, published it in a book called Evolution and Changing Environment. And uh, basically he concluded that the uh, evolutionary consequences of this trade-off and allocation results in populations having high fitness, high reproductive fitness, evolutionary fitness in one environment, but lowered fitness in another environment. And your textbook talks about testing, this is a hypothesis, testing the principle of allocation. And it describes the um, work that was done by Albert Bennett and Richard Linsky uh, by looking at a microbial population. It is a nice thing about bacteria is they grow very quickly. They have a very short generation time. So uh, if you wanna study uh, evolutionary changes in a population, then uh, bacteria go through so their population so rapidly, uh, you can uh, clearly be able to to uh, uh, manipulate the environment and manipulate the temperature and see if there was a trade-off in their reproduction rate uh, depending on the temperatures. So you can go through, um, with bacteria, you can go through hundreds of generations in a week. And uh, this was looking at a bacteria E. coli, which you probably are aware of E. coli, uh, and they can live within the body at our body temperature. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this graph because it is a confusing graph, and the textbook does have a few of these uh, scattered throughout, which is why I bother to explain these things to you. The uh, When you're looking at a graph like this, first of all, you kind of try to figure out what is the x and y axis. Then they have usually some little notes that they've written on the graphs in order to uh, explain things to you. So they put these little boxes on the graph to try to explain things. I, and then you read the caption 
information underneath the figure. And, uh, and then if it's still unclear, go back and reread that section of the chapter. So I'm going to reread this section of the chapter uh, as we, we're talking about this experiment. So Bennett and Linsky's experiments looked at four different lineages of the bacteria E. coli. This lives in your body. So it usually lives at um, a temperature of 37 degrees. And, and they grew these 24 lineages at, at 37 degrees for 2,000 generations. They say a little bit later that the nice thing about bacterial populations is that uh, they have such a short generation time. So a generation time for E. coli at 40 degrees is approximately 20 minutes. So they get a new uh, generation every 20 minutes. They reproduce every 20 minutes. So you can get, uh, you can do great uh, evolutionary research with microbial populations. Then they took these um, uh, populations and established six replicate populations by growing them at four different temperatures. So they would have time over 2,000 generations now to adjust to four different temperatures. They had them grown at 32 degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Celsius, which is their normal temperature, and 42 degrees Celsius. And then they had a fourth population that they alternated between the 32, the low, and the 42, the high. So they maintained these 24 populations. These are the 24 dots you see on this graph. They maintain these 24 populations for 2,000 generations, which gives them time to adapt to those four different temperature regimes. Then they used bacterial cells from each of their 24 populations to establish 24 new populations, which they all grew at 20 degrees Celsius for 2,000 generations. So theoretically, they're adapted to this low temperature in that process. Now, their original question, will adaption, adaptation to a low temperature of 20 degrees be accompanied by a loss of fitness at 40 degrees? Can you only be good at 20 degrees? You can't be good at 20 and 40, even though some of them had been grown at higher temperatures before. So they compared the fitness, and their measure of fitness was how quickly the population size doubled. So it's going to be their reproductive rate, which is really evolutionary fitness. They compared the fitness at the low temperature selected line with the fit fitness of the ancestral line at 20 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. And to see whether the fitness um, uh, when they were growing together uh, was changing. So two major results stand out. First. The populations grown at 20 degrees Celsius had higher positive fitness at 20 degrees Celsius compared to their ancestors. In other words, they showed that the lines grown at 20 degrees Celsius for 2,000 generations had adapted to the lower generation, or to that lower temperature. So if we look at what the x-axis is here, we have um, their fitness being grown at 20 degrees Celsius compared to, compared to their original ancestral lines. And so we can see if they are doing the same, uh, there was no change in fitness. If they do worse, they grow slower, there would be reduced fitness. And if they are doing better than their ancestors, they have increased fitness, they're growing faster. And so in general, when, when uh, they've been adapted to growing at 20 degrees um, compared to their original ancestors, they're growing faster. So everything uh, except for one, one population, all the rest of the populations have improved fitness at 20 degrees. But then they looked at um, the lines that had adapted to 20 degrees. They had, uh, in general, a lower fitness compared to their ancestors when grown at 40 degrees. So they took these populations, grew them at 40 degrees. So that's what the y-axis is. And so if they had no difference, if they're growing the same at 20 and 40 compared to their ancestors, they would be uh, zero change in fitness. If they're doing better, they'd be up on the top half of the graph. And if they're doing worse, growing slower, they'd be at the bottom half of the graph. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can see that for most of these populations, they're down below zero on this y-axis. They're down in the bottom half of the graph, which means they for most of these populations, they are showing a reduction. They're not as well adapted to growing at 40 degrees Celsius as they were at, at growing at 20 degrees Celsius. This result provided the first direct experimental evidence in support of Levin's principle of allocation.
So the principle of allocation, remember, was uh, showing, saying that you could not be adapted to all conditions. If you were adapted, if you're doing well in one condition, that meant you were fitness was lowered in another condition. So this principle in turn offers an explanation for the observation that most organisms perform best under a limited range of environmental conditions, including temperature. So this is section 5.2 in your textbook. It's a short section, but it's a very important section. has a lot of important information. There's a couple of questions at the end of that section 5.2, and I would strongly recommend you uh, being able to answer those concept review questions.